first consent order agreement uh, was signed in November 2009. On February 27, 2009, the department issued, an, a, issued Cabot a notice of violation for, um, among other things, discharging natural gas, a polluting substance, to the waters of the Commonwealth without authorization and for uh, failing to prevent gas from entering fresh groundwater. On May 13, 2009, the department issued Cabot a notice of violation for failing to properly cement casing at certain of the Cabot wells and for failing to prevent gas from entering groundwater. Based upon its investigation since January 2009, the department has determined the following, stating that these wells may have insufficient or improper cemented casings. As of the date of this consent order and agreement, Cabot has not corrected the insufficient or improper cemented casings at the that is it's already 10 months after the investigation began. Based upon the presence of elevated methane in the water supplies, the presence of combustible gas in water well headspace, Cabot had caused or allowed the unpermitted discharge of natural gas. Cabot's failure to properly case and cement to prevent the migration of gas or other fluids into sources of fresh groundwater. Cabot's pollution of the affected water supplies and failure to restore or replace the affected water supplies to the quality at least equal of the water supply prior to becoming affected is a violation. Page 10. Findings. <coughs> Cabot agrees that the findings in paragraphs A through L, R, R through U, W through X, Z, AA, AD, AG, AH, AJ to AK, AN and, a and AP above are true and correct and in any matter of proceeding involving Cabot and the department, Cabot shall not challenge the accuracy or validity of these findings. This document that I'm reading from is dated in November of 2009. It is signed by Philip Stalnacher, Vice President, Regional Manage, Manager for Cabot Oil and Gas. It is also signed by Kenneth S. Kamaraski, Attorney for Cabot. The, 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 the sentence prior to those two signatures says, signature by Cabot's attorney, attorney certifies only that the consent order and agreement has been signed after consulting with counsel. <laughs> Unfortunately, that consent order and agreement was not complied with. In April of, uh, on April 15, uh, 2010, a second consent order and agreement between the department and Cabot was signed. Cabot submitted an integrity plan to the department which identified how Cabot would test for and ensure the integrity of the casing and cement of certain Cabot wells. February 3, 2010, the department received from Cabot the integrity report which identified the results from the testing that it had done in accordance with the approved integrity plan. On March 9 and 10, 2010, the department inspected certain Cabot wells and observed that gas bubbling was continuing to occur contrary to the results reported by Cabot in its integrity report. <coughs> Cabot agrees that the findings in paragraphs A through S above are true and correct and, and in any matter or proceeding involving Cabot and the department, Cabot shall not challenge the accuracy or validity of these findings. There's a great deal more in here, which I won't read to you. It is signed, in this case, by Dan O. Dingy's Chief Executive Officer for Cabot Oil and Gas Corporation. The department uh, has inspected the, these uh, wells numerous times. We have observed gas bubbling. We have uh, observed gas leaking. We have videotaped. We have done sophisticated gas testing to source the gas. And that, that testing is completely identifies the gas as coming uh, from the Cabot wells, even without the agreement of Cabot in two separate agreements, the case is overwhelming. I want to also tell you, because unfortunately Cabot has apparently decided to launch a public campaign at this late date, about some of the work that we've done with Cabot since they signed the second consent order and agreement we have extended extraordinary opportunity to Cabot to, to communicate and to meet 
uh, with department personnel, including senior officials within the department, including myself. I have personally scheduled 13 meetings or calls with Cabot. Now let me say something that I haven't said up to now, but is at the heart of this matter. We've had people here in Pennsylvania without safe drinking water at their homes and properties for uh, close to two years. That is totally, totally unacceptable. It is reprehensible. <laughs> We have given Cabot every opportunity to resolve this matter. And I'm sure people in this room think we've given them way too much opportunity. We have entered into agreements with this company that they have signed and their attorneys have signed. And yet we have not resolved this matter as we meet here today. And at this point, Cabot has apparently chosen to publicly say in letters and in even in paid advertising mm -hmm. that they are completely not responsible. They have even gone so far to say that they signed these documents, quote unquote, under duress. <laughs> <laughs> the laughter, I understand the laughter. Mr. Mr. Dingy's is the CEO of a major corporation. He has immense resources at his command. He has attorneys that he's paying a great deal of money to. And they signed these documents. We're going to take decisive action now because we cannot possibly wait any longer. And we must have a solution to this problem that not only is decisive, but is permanent. The department has come to the conclusion that the really only way to ensure that, and it's certainly the best way to ensure that, is to extend a drinking water line uh, from Montrose. We are really fortunate to be in a situation at this juncture where the Pennsylvania American Water Company is willing and able to extend its service to, to this area and to the families. We are going to uh, move this project forward initially, apparently without the assistance of Cabot. It's going to be absolutely the work and the goal of, of the Department of Environmental Protection and the, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to seek full cost recovery from Cabot for this water line. We are going to do everything we can. <laughs> to, to hold Cabot financially responsible for the for this water line. But we're not going to wait uh, and uh, go through what could be long legal proceedings with Cabot. Uh, in order to get this work going. Uh, we're going to get this work going as soon as it's humanly possible, and we will fight with Cabot if that's what Cabot wants to do. I want to <clears throat> let you know this is a complicated project that we're talking about. This is not, we need to get water from here to here. Put a pipe in. It's not as easy as that, so it's complicated. We're going to put in in this $11.8 million project, 12.5 uh, miles of pipe. We're going to put in pressure regulating stations. We're going to put in hydrants. And importantly, we're going to put in a water treatment system. The water that will come to the residents of Dimmick after this project is finished will come from uh, our Lake Montrose system. Not surprisingly, it's from Lake Montrose. <laughs> Which sits atop the Marcella Shale, which they intend to complete. Mm -hmm. How can you guarantee, and what is your backup plan if Montrose Lake Water goes south? Well, uh, in terms of drilling near near Montrose, uh, that that again is something that I'm sure your Kathy have issues about and concerns about, and that will, in fact, 
be a matter that we need to address. The bottom line of all of this is in Pennsylvania, too many of us take water for granted. <coughs> and too many Americans <coughs> take water for granted until we encounter a situation like this. First of all, I really want to thank you from all of us. We have extreme gratitude for you taking this forceful action. We've waited a long time, as you've explained, and we appreciate that you are committed to this and that you are enforcing uh, the regulation of our state uh, with this private industry that is here. We do have concerns about replacing what we had with this treated water. Many of my friends here want that good, pure water that they had originally, and we know that that's not the way it is now. We have to compromise, but it's going to be a while that we're still going to have to operate with supplemented water. And at this point, I want to make it clear that we are not happy with the supplemented water, and we hope that you can step up for us on this. The DEP determined Cabot responsible for giving us a replacement water. Well, we're getting water in containers that are for cattle use. It's also being delivered by a business that we're not sure that they are legal or certified to be in the water purveying business. We could get a neutral um, company to bring us water instead of one that we had to deal with the NASTA remarks and they're connected to Cabot. Our supplement water should be delivered by a neutral uh, company that will not bring armed guards when they enter our property. Mm -hmm.